Hey, it's Scott Payne. This is session two of Rapid Fire PMP Questions. Let's get into this. I'm gonna teach you by talking through questions how my brain sees questions so that you can replicate, solve questions, get your PMP, and high five. Let's go, here we go. All right, so you know, if you listen to questions with me, we gotta start at the end first, last sentence. Don't make that mistake. All right, why might this be happening? All right, so this isn't a what we do next thing. This is a what's going on now and what root cause could cause us to have this issue. So we got to be a little Sherlock Holmesy. We got to figure it out. All right, so let's go and read the question. And I'm going to evaporate the answers so that you don't get drawn to those. That's a good way to think about it. it says you are working. So we're either like product owner and scrum master probably with your agile team to size the user stories during the current sprint, sprint planning meeting. You have noticed that over the last three sprints, the estimates provided by your developers have progressively gotten larger than expected, and the developers are less confident of if they can actually deliver in the estimations defined. Why might this be happening? So as you start to like put yourself in the guts of the project and see yourself in there in the, on the boots on the ground, let's nail down key words. We said, Working with our Agile team, so it's an Agile project, sweet. Probably the product owner, maybe the Scrum Master, we don't know. During the current sprint planning meeting, all right, so that's a meeting where those three people, have, groups or responsibilities have to be involved. We're trying to get the sprint goal nailed down so that we can bring the user stories, meeting the team, so that they can you know, estimate them, bring in the right number so they can boom, move through. All right, we got the game. You have noticed that over the last three sprints, it says last three, so that's a trend. Things are happening. So is there a systemic problem? Most likely. The estimates provided by the developers have gotten progressively larger than expected. So that doesn't mean like, oh, we're taking on bigger chunks of work. It's like, oh, for that chunk of work, that's more than we thought it would take. Huh, that's peculiar. And the developers are less confident of if they can actually deliver on the estimations defined. Huh, so why might this be happening? Something's going on with the dev team that we need to figure out, right? It's either they don't understand the work, they're not confident pushing back and like nailing down some key points, so they're hedging. Um, they don't have the right skills. Like we got to understand what the deal is. So there's something that the dev team is experiencing that we don't know, right? So let's go in, look at the answers and walk through step by step. Now, I highlighted the re in red and underlined the key things. Sprint planning meeting, last three sprints, progressively getting larger, less confident of if they can deliver uh, in the estimation defined. And on the exam, you can highlight stuff or underlining it. Do it. Don't go crazy, but do it. Now let's look at A and only A. Team members are working too hard and being burnt out. Okay, well, that's a thing. You can push people hard and people can be so excited to do work, they get worn out. Yeah, and then if they do that, would it affect their work? probably and if they're like dude i can't even see straight i'm gonna just hedge a little bit it's gonna be a little harder because you know i'm worn out we're worn out we're done um yeah that's maybe reasonable maybe but let me ask you is there anything in the question that says dudes are just worn out they've been working 73 hours a day anything like that they've complained is there anything in there related to that no there's nothing related to that that would be pure speculation and Sherlock Holmes does not speculate, all right? So we crossed that one out because I have no evidence that that's any even occurred. Sweet, let's go to B. The team is working or worried that the product owner will add additional scope to the sprint. All right, so if you're the product, the product owner puts on the team and says, oh, I'm gonna add some more, add some more, add some more. First of all, is that legal in Scrum or in sprints? No, you shouldn't do that. That's why we have a time box, right? That's why we're having this sprint planning meeting to decide the team can pull in the right things to fulfill and meet the sprint goal. And we're having this conversation, you know, in a heated, positive way to make sure that we get there. So in essence, like this is a violation of what the framework says, right? And then secondly, is there anything in there that says that the team is worried? Over the past couple of sprints, we have seen an occurrence where additional work has been put in there to meet certain crazy customer needs. Is there anything that says anything like that? No. So yet again, this would be pure speculation. So we got to cross it out. Now, as a product owner myself, 
I always, oh, I'm like, oh God, I forgot this. I want to put it in there. I want to put it, put it in the sprint. But I got to hold myself back to say no, because put it in the backlog. It's going to make it in the next sprint, most likely. Just do it there, because I can't violate what the team is doing. <sighs> Cardinal failure of product ownership. Now, C, technical debt is being built on from previous releases. Huh, let's look at this one. Technical debt. Now, 73.5% of you will go like, dude, I don't like it because I don't know what technical debt is. That is not a valid reason to cross out an answer, okay? And that's not a valid reason to go to the next answer. You got to sit in your confusion. And when you take questions like this, if I didn't know what technical debt is, I'd go, huh, what's technical debt? I'd call my friend, I'd Google, I'd look at my index and my site, I'd ask my coaches, I'd do those things, I'd figure it out. So it says technical debt is being built on for previous releases. Now, what is technical debt? Now, technical debt in the simplest terms is like, say you're working and maybe this has happened to you and you have a job to do and you want to get it out. Oh man, they're going to love it or I have a deadline or whatever. And you get it done to the end and it's almost perfectly done. Almost. You've got like a teensy, teensy bit more. You got a little bit of work that's left and you're like, well, it's enough. And that's kind of behind the scenes work. I got to document some stuff. I got to store it the right way. I got to double check a couple little things that probably aren't issues anyway, uh, but I'll do them later. So make a note, write a sticky, put it down to your desk. Okay, put it there. I know I got to do this stuff, but it's really not going to affect, you know, one little sacrifice ain't going to help it hurt anything. Let's push it on. And so, you know, you got to do that stuff. It's in the back of your head on sticky on your desk, but you push out the work. And then it goes out. Maybe it works, maybe it has bugs, whatever, but you start doing that. That essence of like not finishing your work, you have just encumbered yourself with technical debt, things that you got to do later. Now, one time might not seem like a big deal, but if you do it over and over and over and over and over and over, you know what happens? That technical debt <gasps> starts to drown you. And it's like, oh my gosh. I have all this stuff to clean up from stuff that I already shipped out and I've already gotten credit in a sense for doing it. And the team thinks I'm doing new stuff. And so you start to like, oh, want to hide and hedge your bets and say, oh my God, how am I going to get out of this hole? And technical debt ruins your life. Dude, it's a professional technical dentist. That's me. I, I, I want to get stuff out, but you got to be disciplined, right? And then what also happens if you pump out technical debt? Maybe you haven't cross your I's and T's of all your work and there's some like shakiness. So how would that affect your ability to estimate later and build on it? You would be hedging and building and losing confidence because you're like, oh, our foundation is not as strong as it could be. So all that stuff compounds because we made some sacrifices in the, in the hope of speed and not being disciplined. So does C seem like a possible answer? Yes, we're gonna hold on to it. Plus it says, progressively gotten larger than expected. So it's like, they're, you, it feels like they're hedging their work and the people are less confident because they know in their head, oh shoot, I don't want to tell the boss. I got it, oh God. That's kind of things, right? Let's look at D just in case it's super duper. The team members are not working to their full allocated hours. Okay, maybe they're you know, split across teams. Maybe they're not putting in 40. It's the summer. They want to go out and jump rope or have fun, smoke cigarettes, who knows, whatever. Uh but is there anything in the question that says anything like that? Everybody takes uh, ice cream Sunday Tuesdays, right? No, nothing in there. So we get rid of it. Bang, we got the answer, technical debt. And we knew in our hearts initially, something's in the, in the gut of this, the, the, the team. Something's holding them back. So as a scrum master, as someone, you've got to rip that open in a positive way and like, dudes, dudettes, what is happening? I'm reading your face. Tell me I'm wrong, dude. Tell me I'm wrong. Is there something going on? What are you not telling me? Whisper it. Don't worry, I won't tell anybody. Tell me what the real fear is, what the real problem is. That's what you got to do. So if you put yourself in there, we're just talking about work, bro. We're not talking about PMP. We're talking about work and getting things done and the human side of it and the technical side of it. That's how we do it. If you do that, you ace the PMP, you're better for it. Yeehaw. If you want to come and talk to me, Scott at PM Master Prep, Email me, Scott at PM Master Prep, or go to my site, click the button for the trial. You get free access to my trial course, tons of awesome videos. You're going to learn a ton, and you get to get a coaching call with me. Let's do this. Why are you waiting? See you later. Alligator. 